PowerPoints, power lunches, conference calls, reply to all, endless meetings, constant check-ins, and so much wasted time. Are you sick of the BS? So are we. It's time to take our time back, rework the way we work, and make every call a call to action. This is a podcast for people who want to stop talking and really start connecting. This is After 12. Hey, Adam. Adam, we're, hey, buddy. Yes. Hey, buddy. Yes. We're, we're rolling. We're rolling now. Yeah. What's that? We're, we're rolling. Oh, hang on one second. One second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just was doing some research for this episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to After 12. I'm your host, Adam Voss. With me, my dear friend and co-host, Josh Rush. After 12, as always, is produced and uh, sponsored by Echelon Design. The, l- the last um, time we checked, yeah. Yes, yes. I, didn't, I haven't gotten paid in like about two months, but I'm, I'm sure it's just a glitch. <laughs> uh, anyway, so today, Josh, we're talking about Threadless, a t-shirt design company in Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, how's it going? Hey, Adam Buss from Boat Control. Awesome, nice to meet you. Welcome to Threadless. I feel like we're in a gallery. There's just art everywhere. Exactly. I mean, that's pretty much what we're doing is what we're passionate about. We've kind of opened our building up so that we can show uh, art in all its different forms and promote people of all different styles and not just t-shirts or online. Essentially, Threadless is a platform for designers. Um, obviously, they do print and produce t-shirts, but this they've really created um, a thriving community of designers who have their own artist shops. Uh, they're able to upload, kind of manage those those shops online through art, uh, through through uh, Threadless's platform. Um, so I don't know, Adam. Would you say that they're is it? I mean, they're a t-shirt design company, but they're more like a platform. Would you say? Yeah, I mean, they are a platform. Um, so Threadless, as an e-commerce site, sells t-shirts that again have been crowdsourced um, designs but then they you know a few years back launched their artist shops that are fully branded artist-based promotional shops so adam voss could have a shop in fact we have a we a do 12 have, for 12 we do have a we shop. do have a shop I, I don't know how many t-shirts we sold so it'd be a good time to plug this and i think it's somewhere. threadless.com uh backslash or forward slash i think it's artistshops.com forward slash 12 for 12 but We've I done don't. a lot of pre-production again on this episode. <laughs> clearly, all the episodes. clearly, this might be a, a good time for a little segment we like to call uh, "What's in Your Cup Today, Adam?" <laughs> well, it's called bourbon. That's right. <laughs> Cheers, and who, Josh. And, and and thank you to our sponsors at Angels Envy for donating today's bourbon uh, and Butcher and Brew in Alpharetta. Cheers. Cheers, pal. Salute. Eh, ciao. Hmm. Things are going to get either better or worse uh, from this point forward. All right, now we're ready. Okay, we're rolling. We're actually rolling now. Um, Threadless's whole brand is based on making great together. Jake Nickel is one of the two original founders of Threadless. He's the current CEO and an all-around great guy. Thank you for having us in your gallery home, if I could call it that. Yeah, thanks for coming to hang out. How does Make Great Together translate and and how you run the business? I started this company really to just make cool stuff with my friends and that's what Make Great Together means. Like we're all kind of artists in our own right. So making stuff is a big part of it. And then great is about the curation that we do here. Like how do we find um, the stuff that appeals to the most people kind of thing. And how do we learn and get better and stuff like that. Um, And then together is the community part. Three amazing components. One, they're makers. And I, and I, Josh and I and the 12 for 12 crew and Echelon, our whole slogan is make it until you make it. Don't with, fake it until uh, you make it. Yeah, don't fake it. I mean, make it. You know, I, I always think about like people that are trying to do something. Don't try, do it. You know, make it. Yeah, and, um, and hopefully, you know, create a space where people will, will want to help make it with you. Adam, how many viewers do we have uh, on our podcast right now? Do you know? Currently, like the live count is four. We've got four people. Tell your mom I said thanks. Mom, I didn't tell dad, but you need to stop. <laughs> um, She's your biggest fan. Talk about making you know fans that build brands. Where would you be without your mother? 
Exactly. Where would any of us be without our mothers? <laughs> I know. My mom's right here, actually. No, she's not. So how does the whole process work? Anyone could submit. Uh, you don't have to be an artist by trade if you just have a passion for art or want to just create something cool. It's pretty easy. Let's just like throw this at com slash submit. It's about 10 days of voting. After voting, it's just like a little wait period where uh, me and my team kind of go through all the designs, kind of break it down to smaller lists, smaller lists, smaller. So when it gets to your level, is it like the top 5% or the top 2%? Or? There's definitely the top in there, but I definitely like to try other like new stuff, kind of test out stuff too. When we talk about give people what they want, have them be a part of creating that too. I think that Threadless has done a great job of, of just engaging the community. So you said like it's the best design. So automatically there's this sense of gamification or, you know, they allow people to rank designs, you know, on a, on yeah. a system of one to five um, to, you know, on like a star basis essentially. So, um, you know, I mean, that automatically creates a sense of, of I don't want to call it competition so much as it's like, Let's vote. Let's see who's, who's, whose favorite's going to win. Well, I think the most successful companies in the world do the same thing. I mean, like, for instance, the number one toy company in the world is Lego. And, yeah. you know, Lego, um, a Danish toy company, it's like, you know, what I used to play with when none of my friends wanted to know that. Well, I didn't have any friends, really. No, of course, Legos. you didn't have any friends. The only, fr um, the only friends that I have nowadays are the ones that I pay to stay close to me. Well, I'm your That's sad. bestest friend. That's sad. <laughs> Enough That's so sad. sad. Um, no, so I mean, like Lego's got you know the uh, their their whole um, Lego. Uh, what do they call it their Experience Lab, or I, f I forget what it's called. <clears throat> they they do the same. Yeah, we got it again. Uh, Lego Ideas. Lego Lego Ideas. Yeah. So and how does that how does that work? Um, you have an idea, you know, for a different toy and you can submit your design. It's the same thing as Threadless, except you know, right now I think most companies um, have been taking advantage of licensing. So you know, like, you know, we've, we've dealt with a lot of different companies um, in our own business that, that do licensing um, to benefit what they make. So at the, at the end of the day, like you want your thing to be, um, something that somebody wants, something that's interesting, something that, that you don't have to pour so a bunch of... Let's talk about that for a couple of minutes because, again, I, I, I think that the, the value of, of our show after 12 and, and really and truly 12 for 12 and the work that we do um, is in trying to create, um, you know, at least a, a, like maybe a paradigm shift and the way that everyday marketers think about the way that they are, you know, going about their job. And the shared economy of like, a, you know, Airbnb or Lyft or whatever. What do you think of this this new onset of, of business paradigm? Okay, I see a lot of businesses start that are like, you know, how can we um, use this community to do our work for us? Versus the way we think about it, which is like there's this community of people out there doing amazing things, and how can we add value to them? You know, and like, yeah. um, I think crowdsourcing over the years has gotten a bit of a bad name with some some of the stuff that's happened, um, where it's more like how do we reduce the price of labor and stuff like that. <laughs> we crowdsource. Um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Threadless.com, the technology, the website. You could build the exact same technology and use it for good or for evil. The reason that Threadless built this brand so fast because I mean within 10 years they their numbers had exploded and they were over you know that kind of five to ten million fan base um, which is huge and I think the reason is is they hired people that were fans let's talk about that we've done this at Echelon where I wouldn't say we have a crowdsource but I mean we have a you know an internship program it's paid we don't we don't put people to work for free um, we have a lot of side projects like this podcast um, where we're pulling in, you know, people who are independent to help us out. And, you know, oftentimes we bring these folks into our organization. It's a, it's a way for us to kind of, you know, work together on something that's aspirational. That might be a side hustle, kind of side project. Uh, but eventually that thing picks up enough speed and momentum uh, where we have, um, you know, uh, an opportunity to bring people on and continue to do things as part of you know, our, our team, which helps to grow and build culture and ultimately bring more people to to us and to our brand. Um, and Threadless obviously has done this, you know, exponentially. Um, they have a platform, they've productized t-shirt design and production in a way that, you know, allows designers to reach, I mean, literally the masses. So um, 
I mean, they, I, you know, we toured their, we toured their facility. I know they, they've moved since. I haven't been back to their new production space, the new, their new corporate office. But um, I mean, they've got some really cool people who I think started out as just designers uh, on the platform. While Threadless curates art across many different canvases, including their own building, the canvas that built the brand was simply a cotton t-shirt. And it turns out a lot of their employees were hired from within the Threadless community of artists. Jeff Guero started as a Threadless community member and now curates the selection process. How would you advise, you know, a, a group of marketers to take, you know, this kind of Threadless building brands through, you know, fandom or community and that kind of approach? You know, when you're like, let, let's look at an easier company, easier brand. Um, so Stuller, which is one of I think the North America's largest manufacturer and supplier of jewelry findings mountings i mean they every mom and supplies and equipment i mean they are number one yeah. in terms of gemstone diamonds rare gold you know like they got it all so they so stellar has a obviously a, a desire and, and probably a mandate to grow their business every year uh, profitably um and yeah. but they are the market leader in this space what could stellar do what lessons could stellar learn from what threadless has done to tap the designer community you know, I mean, jewelry requires design, obviously. I mean, is there is there something there? Yeah, I think so. I mean, so Stuller is really interesting, too, because in their DNA, uh, they're based and born in Lafayette, Louisiana. And for all, you know, 100% disclosure, I do a lot of work with Stuller personally. I am kind of a brand advocate. I'm on camera. I interview their people. And I love everything they do because it's all about the pre the the premise of uh lawn yop which is a it's a louisiana term of a little gift it's giving something back it's about being true and and being a friend and being a um a, b gifting somebody something that you love and i think you know they could really benefit from giving a little bit more focus to the Louisiana lanyap, um, to to their their roots. I, I think you know a lot of people you know know them as like the back room of the jewelry industry. There right. are Stoller catalogs in every jeweler in America, without question. If you doubt that, go to your local jeweler and ask them if they've heard if you if they've heard of Stoller, and they'll show you voluminous voluminous pages of rare golds and the mines of moria so, anyway so so two shots so, that's it one and a half um so let's just say stellar was going to try and adopt this this kind of you know making great together this idea of tapping you know whether it's the you know the the bench jewelers or the designers themselves what could Stellar do? I mean, think about it. this is an opportunity right now we're actively pitching a client a great idea we're it's actively pitching you if I wanted to start the next Threadless, what advice would you give to me? Look at the community of people that you want to work with, whether it's artists or like people like chefs, and think of it more of like how do you help add value to a community that's already doing cool stuff, rather than like how can I use this community to do something for me. Yeah, okay, first and foremost, like you can't sell. You get, you just have to you have to be a part of your customers. Or you, you know, the people that love what you do, they, they're gonna love what you do. So, well, but don't, you, and, you're, 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 is it your niece who is a jewelry designer? Niece? Yeah, Annie. Okay, so Annie's a jewelry designer, and she does she rep for other jeweler like I don't know like no she's dot, she has she, oh, she's or, worked for she's worked for um, the Banana Republic company she's done stuff for the Gap and all that that stuff but she's an independent jeweler who you know has has depended on on Stoller for years as kind of the lifeblood for all of the back end that she needs. So, so all of her materials. But wouldn't it, I mean, wouldn't it be kind of cool? I mean, tech, or Stoller always has the technology in place if they were to create a platform for Annie to be able to sell. Like, I mean, if they could, if there was a way to connect Annie to, to a broader group, maybe there's there's something there. That's not a bad, I mean, that so that that's kind of a similar premise to Threadless is that like, you know, part of everything is sales. You're such a deft salesperson and it, it's also kind of the double-edged sword, right? Because when someone knows you're selling, they're like, hey, can you just fuck off? Can yeah. you not sell to me? But the, the problem is, like, without sales, there would be nothing. There'd yeah. be no industry. There'd be no business. I was I, the same way. I mean, like, you know, I'm a producer, but, like, I, you know, I'm, I did not 
initially want to sell any of my customers or clients or friends on anything I was doing. But like, if you love doing something and you're like, hey, check this out, you're going to say, hey, check this out. I, I think the trick is to be saying th at the same time, listen, you don't have to buy anything that I'm interested in. You don't, I just want to tell you this could help you. I know it can help you because I've seen it help other companies. You know, I, well, I struggle with this. That's going to be the, that's really going to be the topic, I think, of our next episode too. The, the idea of, of uh, no, but I struggle sure with this, and, we're, and with we're even with Threadless, how much to physical? No, no, even with Threadless, they started as an e-commerce platform, but like right. so much of what has made them uh, an impactful brand is the fact that they've they have a community that's offline as well. Like they right. they sponsor events, they have. They have training seminars at their office. They have bands that play at their office. They bring local and foreign, um, you know, street artists to do murals on the side of their buildings and things like this. So you curate kind of art space outside of the actual warehouse here in the t-shirt. Yeah, it's something we recently started doing. So to me, it's kind of a way of giving thanks to the artists that have worked with us by finding more work and more exposure for them, getting, getting more gigs. It's it's a huge part of their culture. I mean, obviously design being centric to everything that they do, but just that idea of collaboration and community, I think you're right. You know, I mean, that's a huge lesson learned um, is taking the community element offline, right? I mean, it doesn't, everything doesn't have to be about a social platform or technology, which obviously enables a lot of what they're doing. Um, but if they weren't present offline um, with their people, with the artists, uh, with the community, I, 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 they, they would not have the, the same kind of success that they have now. Well, and you said it, the, the, the real word in, in being um, a good steward of what you do is presence. Like really being there and if it's there on on cyberspace or if it's there you know on a tour of your facility it's being there and really loving what you do and showing people why you love it and showing them not telling them just i i you know that's that's also big i mean we work with a lot of people who i you know i, I i'm not not to name name specifically a lot unfortunately a lot of our clients do love what they do every day but we come across them all the time where it's like people are kind of going through the motions and maybe that's because their marketing is holding them back or maybe that's because they don't feel like they can do this kind of stuff but i mean at the end of the day uh this is what's going to get you up in the morning this is what is going to make you love what you do and 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 if and if you know using some of these kind of lessons learned and trying to to take a play out of threadless's playbook um you know it helps you know re-energize your i mean i guess i would challenge anybody to just try like you know try to connect try to engage um, and and I, I mean, I would almost guarantee you that it's going to, if it's lacking, if that energy or that, that spark is lacking, that, that it's going to help uh, just kind of breathe life back into your marketing program. Life is short, folks out there watching After 12. And if you don't have passion for being alive and doing what you do, then you're done. You're yes. a human being, not a human doing. So yes. be be what you are and show the folks that buy from you what you are, uh, who you are. So to recap for this episode of After 12. That's a great idea. Th Threadless.com. Remember to give people not just what they want, but what they want to make. Great. Let them be a part of it. You know, let them show you what is good, not just what they like from your catalog. And then add value. Don't don't just take advantage of a crowd. Be the the union, you know, that brings the crowd together. This is a union of artists at Threadless. These guys are working together because this is what they are. Being an artist. Yeah, and and, and again, uh, the last thing I think is just take the community element offline. Uh, it's not all about technology. It's not all about social or social media or platforms. Uh, it's really about about people. And um, you know, truly, uh, when you're making great together as a community, I mean, it gives you the power. Threadless is a vital brand, a successful brand, because it's a community of artists that make great together. And like He Man and all of his friends and Grayskull, making great together gives you the power. And the fans. And fans build brands. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just build 
most of my bourbon. But Angel's Envy, we're a fan. If you're watching, uh. um, hire us, your biggest fans, as the fourth point of this episode. We, Josh? They, did, they didn't even engage us. They didn't even ask us, and we're, we're already a part of their community. Thank you. We'll sell for you for free. Until next episode of After 12, check out more learnings, fun, and good times at either 12for12.com or echelondesign.com. And again, to Reed Harmon, our president. Thanks, Reed. Cheers, pal. Not even 8 in the morning. Mm -hmm.